What's going on, growers? It's James Pagione coming to you live from Jersey. It's a beautiful day out here. The garden is doing fantastic. Tomatoes are getting big, as you can see. Loading up with tomatoes soon will be in production. Today, I wanted to bring you through and grab some fruits, some of the fruits of the labor, get some big cabbages that we have over there, and just give you an overview of how everything's doing. Let's go. As you can see, we have the two food forests behind me. And in this section, I planted a number of my brassicas. This is where I like to plant them. This year, we got hit by the groundhog. He took out a number of the brassicas, but we still are getting some of them, especially some of my favorite things like the cabbages. Here, we've got a nice sized cabbage. Let me cut this one out and uh, show you how it looks. It's got a thick base on it. You can see it got bit a little bit by some of the bugs, but overall, a real big, nice cabbage. Looks excellent, we're gonna make some coastal out of this one. Let me pull off some of these leaves and show you what it looks like, give you a little better perspective. So I'm gonna cut these lower leaves off. You can see some of them have a couple bites and we're gonna give these to the chickens. The chickens are definitely gonna enjoy this. They love the brassicas. Cut off the bottom. This thing's so thick I'm having a tough time getting my pruners around it. But overall, it looks like a nice cabbage. A little dirty in the bottom, but good size. This thing's gonna make some excellent coleslaw. Excited to eat this one. A real good size too. I mean, it's got nice weight to it. Full of water, obviously. Pretty tight, which you love to see with a cabbage. So overall, I think it looks really good. Got another cabbage and a few other ones. Let's grab those. We'll cut this baby up. As you can see, it's got a little purpling in it. I'm not, I don't remember the exact variety of this one. The stalk on this cabbage is so thick, I can't even, I can't even get around it with the pruners. So I got the lopers here, we're gonna use those. So I'll just take the lopers to it. This thing is pretty heavy. I'm just gonna remove all these lower leaves again. Some of these leaves look like they have a few bites on them. Gonna remove some of those, some of this lower stuff, but overall the cabbage looks really nice. I don't see any worms or anything in there. So I think it's gonna be another nice one. Really hard, thick, nice weight to it. So two beautiful cabbages. I got another small one over there and a few others that are still just getting ready like this one right here. Looks like it's a later one. I hope, hope it tightens up a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful leaves on it. I'm not positive this one might be the Auberville cabbage but it looks pretty good. So um, hopefully we get another cabbage on that one, but two nice cabbages so far. I'm happy with that, with how bad the groundhog really got at us early this year, but we stuck with it. That's one of the things, things can be up against you, but you gotta stick with it. You never know what you can get if you just keep trying. You can even get a harvest like this, or we're gonna get even more coming up here. Every time I let Tuck in the garden, I turn around. All I hear is just the crunching in the background. So funny, he just sneaks off and grabs carrots. As you can see, this is a, good boy, Tucky. This is a, it looks like it might be atomic red. This is like a red or carrot, not like your typical orange one. Last time he came in here and had one of the white ones that I was growing in here as well. As you can see, we've got a lot of these carrots planted between the tomatoes. Kind of like uh, one of our favorite books, Carrots Love Tomatoes. So this tomato right here is not as big as some of the other ones, but some of them, I'm telling you, they're just getting massive. Look at this thing. It's starting to put tomatoes out too, but it's close to six feet. We have one tomato alley that I showed you earlier, then we have this one as well. So this year I think is definitely gonna be our best year ever for tomatoes. And we're doing well with carrots as well. Uh, you can see Tuck's taking advantage of that with every bite. He just loves these things. Every time I turn around, I just hear the crunching. And this is one of the reasons I can't let him in the garden all the time because he will literally just eat half my carrots and he'll pull down my cucumbers and pull up my peas. But I, I, I can't get mad at him, it just cracks me up. I think it's so funny. He just loves being out here probably as much as me. The first thing I wanna do is harvest some zucchinis. Gotten a lot of them this year and there's even more coming. So what I've been doing is actually making some zucchini parm lasagna with some of the bigger ones, but this is the size I really like to harvest them. As you can see, it's a, these are perfect for sauteing. I love doing sauteing with some olive oil, a little bit of sea salt, so good. But I'll even use some of the zucchinis for uh, smoothies. I'll just throw them in a smoothie with some ice and that's really good too. So. I always like cutting them so we don't damage it, so it's good for eating. As you can see, real nice zucchini too. This is the size, again, that I love eating them at. My favorite variety though is the Italian variety over here. So let me grab one of those. This vine has just been kicking them out, looking so fantastic. 
So here's one right here. Cut this off. And as you can see, just a nice size as well. But look how fantastic the vine is doing. It's already trellised along so far. This one not only grows the best, but it definitely has the best flavor. It has more of like a nutty flavor than the other zucchinis do. So we, as you can see, we've harvested like one, two, three, four, five or so just from this one vine. So hopefully it continues to produce. The leaves look excellent. And I've got a lot more of the zucchini. Let's grab some of those. Now we're gonna grab a few more zucchini, different variety. As you can see, these leaves are getting a little powdery mildew, but it hasn't really slowed the plant down much. So some of that powdery mildew has to do with the variety. You'll notice that Italian variety isn't having any powdery mildew. So here's an, another nice one. Stick that in there. Grab this for one of these. A little oddly shaped, but I'm still sure it'll still taste great. Put that one in. And you can see we've got a few different vines planted in here. So there's about one, two, three or so of them. And they're, they're still doing well. They, I kind of planted three of them in one spot and they're all kind of growing off in their own different direction. So when you bring the, when you look from a higher perspective, it almost looks like it's one giant zucchini plant, but it's occupying one space. So I think that worked out pretty well. And it's something I might do in the future as well. I still have one more variety of squash I want to show you and we'll grab a few of them. So there's two different, three different varieties in here so far. This is the fourth one. And this one has a, it's got like a darker skin and it, the skin seems like it's a little thicker. So to be honest, it's probably my least favorite out of the four different varieties that I have. So I don't know if I'm gonna necessarily be growing them next year, but these plants are still producing well. As this one's still putting them out. And you'll notice I grow a lot of zucchini, not a lot of yellow squash, because I just love eating zucchini. It's one of my favorite squashes that there actually are. Now I'm gonna grab some cucumbers that are ready. The cucumbers got a, off to a little bit of a slow start because with how much rain we've had, I planted them early. So some of them are still are starting to ripen up, which is nice. Tuck's been eating a lot of them. This one's pretty nice here. I've got a few nice ones outside of the fence too that I need to grab now because Tuck's already out there trying to pick some of them off the fence. Here we've got a nice cucumber growing, as you can see, hanging out right outside the fence. These ones could get really large, but I like them when they're about this side, size so they're not, they don't have too many big seeds in them. Then I, Tuck's protecting some of the other cucumbers over there. Here's one of the spots where he likes to dig the holes to get nice and cool. And we've got a nice cucumber hanging right above where, where he usually likes to dig. So some of these cucumbers have a, a little bit of mold damage on the leaves. And I think that's because a lot of the rain that we've had, but we're still getting some, some nice ones as you can see. One thing about Tuck though is, if you have some cucumbers hanging outside the fence, he likes to snack at them when they're growing through. As you can see this one here, he took a couple bites out of this one over here was scratching towards trying to eat. So maybe we'll just rip this one off for him. See if he wants a little more of it. Sometimes he waits for me to, to hand it to him like this, but sometimes like you saw, he'll just scratch and eat it right through the fence. But we, we love sharing cukes. This is one of our favorite times of the year when we got all this different kind of stuff to eat. Baby, ask you not to keep me waiting. Don't want it to go to waste, but when you eat a cucumber like this from the garden, it has zero comparison to what you have in the store. The ones in the store just taste like cold, hard water sometimes. These things have a true cucumber flavor to them. Even the smell, you crack this thing in your house, a cucumber, you can smell it throughout the whole house. It's just the minerals in it, I think, that create some of that flavor, some of that smell. Nothing like homegrown, nothing like from your own backyard. I told you not to keep me if you don't believe me, talk's a testament to that. Look at this guy. I can't keep him off the cukes. I can't keep him out of the garden. And if he does sneak into the garden when I'm trying to keep him out, I'll go right to the carrots, dig the carrots up, right to the cucumbers, dig those up. So, as we're enjoying some of these fresh ones, uh, let's go keep harvesting. Here's another cube hanging outside the fence. It's funny because you would think I almost like try to get Tuck in all the shots or something. Anytime I try to film or anytime I try to do something, he's always just next to me. He's like my shadow. He loves being in the shot and he loves all the comments from everybody. So th throw some hearts down there for Tuck if you enjoy him, if, uh, if you find him funny that he digs some of his own food up from the garden. Here's a different variety of Cucumber, this is one of the ones that doesn't have those, uh, those spikes on them or anything. And the flavor on these are just incredible as well. So I love eating these ones. 
I got a few more inside. Let's grab some of those. And then we'll grab uh, maybe some some beans and some carrots and I got a bunch of garlic to get too. I got a couple more cukes, so I'm just gonna throw those in. Then uh, harvest some of these beans here. These beans, I love the color of them and the flavor is excellent as well. I gotta make sure I'm not getting too close to the fence because Tuck will eat these right up too. So we'll just get a number of these. And I love to eat the beans raw, but they're also good if you wanna saute them too. A little butter, a little garlic. And like I said, we're gonna be harvesting a, a bunch of garlic too. Some of the garlic is probably the past the point of harvest, but it looks like it's still gonna be okay. Some of the leaves have really died back. Not only are these beans beautiful and they taste good, but they're insanely productive. So we've been coming out and harvesting these things, I mean, pretty regularly. Hard to keep up with these. So I've got another row actually planted right next to me of more dragon tongue beans. There's a couple coming up like right here. You can see some of them are starting to bend their, uh, bend out of the soil. So we've got more rounds of dragon tongue beans and also purple beans. Now I'm gonna grab some of the dragon tongue beans. I mentioned it before, but these ones are definitely my favorite. And you can see by some of the plants that they're starting to finish it up. The plants are starting to give up. And that's why we have the next round planted about to sprout. So we'd like to plant things in succession. So we've always got things growing. And when some things are at the peak or just finished off the harvest wise is when we like to plant some of the stuff. So it's that idea of manipulating time, which is what Masanobu Fukuoka was actually the master of. So by manipulating time, Masanobu Fukuoka would have some plants take care of the next generation and would always have something else coming up. That's what he did with the wheat and the barley. Some dragon tongues here. I know I've got more by my uh, zucchini. We'll grab some carrots and beets and we'll just keep the harvest going along. And when it comes to beans and peas and stuff like that, you wanna harvest them often, early and often so that they continue to produce flowers and they continue to produce fruit. Some of these ones have a lot better color than others, but the flavor is still always there. So far this year hasn't been a great one for cucumbers. It's been much worse actually than last year, but also the tomatoes this year are doing way better than they did last year, and so have the zucchinis. So it's one of those things where, you know, not everything is gonna do great every single year. There's always gonna be some problems, and it, I think it has to do some with our character, um, what we do with those problems. Whether or not we can learn from those things and improve on them next year, or whether or not we're just gonna give up and we're gonna cry about it. I don't think that's the way to approach it. I think instead we want to, like I said, learn from those things, maybe some mistakes that we made, change and alter things for next year, and realize that we're always gaining more knowledge every time we garden, every time we put a seed in the ground, we learn something new. But if we never plant, we're never going to learn that. And that knowledge can become power. Some people say knowledge is power, but uh, I don't completely agree with that. I heard someone say that applied knowledge is power. And I definitely agree with that more. So I think we have to apply the things we know, and then if we can do that, we'll be open to know and learn even more. And you're never gonna know everything with gardening. That's just the way it is. Bill Mollison said, um, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. So I think that's a profound statement, and I take some from that. If you guys are enjoying the video, hit the subscribe button. If you wanna to contribute to the channel, if you love what we're doing here, check out the merchandise. We got some of the shirts here. I love the shirts, I've got a bunch of different colors now. I like wearing them out to the stores and stuff and everything. People ask what food forest means and we can get into a fun conversation. Now I wanna grab some garlic. And some of this I should have harvested a little earlier, but I wanted to keep them as long as I could so that the tomato, they could grow between the tomatoes like they are to help prevent some pests and stuff and they're rooted in there pretty good, so I wanna make sure I can keep the tops on them when I harvest them so that, uh, so that I can dry and cure them. So we're just gonna try to best without damaging to go right around the base of it. Pop the roots out. And this one is a little smaller than some of the other cloves, but still pretty decent size. Get that in there. Cover them back up with the wood chips. Move on to the next one. And these garlic I planted in the fall. So it's actually nice planting the garlic in the fall because it's kind of a time when everything in the garden is slowed down. There's not too much to do. So it's not a huge rush, kind of like the early spring when you're doing the tomatoes and everything. and Everything seems to be coming at once. Whoop. That one's a little nicer. Harvest this one next. More worms, love to see it. Always a good sign. We want them constantly working. That's the thing, the worms, they don't take really any days off. Hard workers, they don't complain about the work conditions. If they don't like it in the garden, they'll leave. So we like to create a good environment for them to hang out and stay in. 
as you can see, this is a little, little bigger of a bulb. Pretty nice one here. Good size. It's kind of more of what we like to see. And I planted a number of different varieties, so some varieties are just bigger than the others. Get one more over here. So we're gonna keep, continue harvesting. Looks like we're gonna good, get a great harvest this year. Then some of these we'll just plant again in the fall and just continue that uh, progression of growing garlic every year. Next, I'm gonna grab a few carrots. As you probably saw, there's some carrots that are flowering from last year that we kept in here. So let's just grab a few of these. It's like a red carrot, atomic red, I think it might be. So decent looking carrot there. I actually pulled in another small one. It's like a pretty good sized one back here. This thing's got a thick, thick base. This one's a pretty good size, actually. Monstrous carrot, so we're gonna stick that one in there. And we've got some of the purples. Let's get a few different varieties of carrots, kind of mix it up a little bit. Let's grab a few more carrots, a different variety now. Let's grab this one here. Looks like a pretty decent one. A few stringy hairs, but not too bad. You can see the different varieties. Unique colors there, not just your typical orange one. Now let's grab, see if we can grab some orange ones. Always fun planting different colors, harvesting different colors carrots. Here's an orange one here. A few different colors in there. Some of these uh, orange ones are trying to stand right out of the ground. So I think that means it's kind of ready to be eaten. It's growing a little small one. This almost looks like a Scarlet Nantes. Nice color on it though. A few different varieties. I'm not gonna grab all of them because I like coming out and harvesting them periodically. Let's see if we've got any ones that I wanna grab down here. Let's see, those ones don't look like they're that ready. Maybe grab this one at the end here. Feels like it's a pretty deep one. Looks like it's gonna have to be a right hand grab as I'm righty. Yeah, this is a, it's a pretty long one. Pretty nice color. But again, you can see that even the different variety in those two. So we've got a number of different variety of carrots in here. It's always fun growing a bunch of different colors. I've got some white ones planted too in the other food forest, but Tuck likes to grab those and eat those basically. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and had a good time coming along with me and Tuck and reaping some of the things that we sowed earlier in the year. There's gonna be more harvest coming. The tomatoes are coming, the peppers, the eggplants and everything. So hit the subscribe button if you wanna follow along for all the harvests and for all the videos. Thanks for watching. Uh, me and Tuck truly appreciate it and all the support. If you guys wanna contribute to the channel, check out the shirts. So you can be walking around with your own food forest shirt, carrying your own food out of your forest. See you in the next one. Tuck and James Joni Week. Ow.